Hey there, Morgan here from Crafting a Lovely Life, and today I'm going to show you how to use iron-on vinyl, also known as heat transfer vinyl, on canvas. We're going to make a super cute and super easy, this is my happy place sign. I love how this turned out and can't wait to show you how easy it is to use heat transfer vinyl on canvas. So let's get started. The first thing we're going to do is get our project set up in Cricut Design Space. So let's start a new project and upload our design. The design I'm using today is available for free on my website and I'll link that down below. Just navigate to where you have the design file saved and select the SVG file. Once the design is open, we're going to resize the design to fit our canvas. I'm using a six by six canvas, so I'm taking the design down to about five inches. If you're using a larger canvas, be sure to size the design accordingly. Now that we have the design the size that we want it, we need to get the design layers organized a bit differently before we are ready to cut. If I just click make it now, you'll see that we have a lot of mats and there are some parts of the design that can be attached to make the most efficient use of our material. So the first thing I'm going to do is ungroup the design. You will see that when I ungroup the design, it is now broken up by color. The only part of my design that I want to keep together during the cut is the this is my part of the design. Everything else is going to be cut individually so that I don't waste any material. Right now, the purple part of the design is grouped together, but in order to attach just the this is my part, I need to ungroup the purple part of the design. Let me undo my moves here so the design is back together. Now in my layers column, I'm going to select the purple group and click ungroup. You can see now that each individual word and letter is separate for the purple part of the design. But I want the this is my part of the design to stay attached during the cut. You can do this by either holding down the shift key and selecting each word in the layer column and clicking attach, or you can hide all of the other parts of the design, click and drag to select all three words and then click attach. Now you can see that those words stay together. So now we can click make it and start arranging our mat to cut. You can see each color is showing its own mat. You could absolutely cut the design this way if you wanted to. You would just cut each color one at a time. What I like to do to save time is actually load up all of the design onto one mat so that I can cut all of the colors at once. To do that, you will go to the mat you want to move click on the design and click the three little dots on the top of the design. Then you will select move object and pick the mat you want to move it to. Since this part of the design is going to be purple, I will select the other purple mat to move it to just to keep track of all of the colors. Once it's on the new mat, move it over so that none of the cuts will overlap. Then go to the next color you want to move over. I'm going to move over all of my pink cuts next. When I move the next color over, I like to bring the letter down to the next whole number on the mat. This makes it super easy for me to line up my vinyl later on the mat to make sure I don't accidentally cut outside of the material. Then we will do the same thing for the rest of the colors. Once the mat is ready, make sure you select mirror on the mat. Anytime you use heat transfer vinyl, you need to mirror your design. Now that we have the rest of the colors moved over and we have mirrored our design, we are ready to place the vinyl on our actual standard grip cutting mat. Use the measurements on the mat in Cricut Design Space to determine what size you need to cut each color of the HTV down to. Now we're going to place the HTV on the mat. You want to make sure that the HTV is placed shiny side down. 
Starting at the top, we will place the purple HTV on the mat. Next is our pink layer. The brand of HTV I'm using is a little strange in that the back of some of the sheets are white. Normally, both sides are the same color like you see with the purple vinyl here. But no matter what brand of HTV you use, you always want to make sure the shiny side is down. Then we will line up our blue vinyl and lastly the green. Make sure that you are placing the vinyl in the same spots on the mat as we set up in Design Space. Before I make any cuts, I like to use a brayer tool to make sure that the vinyl is really stuck down on the mat. Okay, now we are ready to start cutting. Turn on your machine and click Continue in Design Space so that we can select our material type. If you are using Cricut brand heat transfer vinyl, then be sure to select the specific kind as your material type. For example, Everyday Iron-On is a specific type of Cricut brand heat transfer vinyl. I am using a non-Cricut brand heat transfer vinyl, so I'm going to set my material to heat transfer vinyl non-Cricut. If you are using an Explore machine, you will want to set the dial to Iron-On. Once you select your material, the arrow button on your machine should start blinking, meaning you are ready to load your mat. Once the mat is loaded, the Cricut button will start blinking and you are ready to start cutting. When the machine is done cutting, the arrow button will start blinking again and you can unload the mat. To take the HTV off of the mat, you will want to flip over the mat and gently peel the mat back from the HTV. Peeling the HTV right off of the mat can cause the material to curl, which is not what we want. Now you will notice that the Cricut actually cut all the way through the plastic sheet on my HTV in some places. All that means is that there was a bit too much pressure when it was cutting. This can happen when you're using non-Cricut HTV because all brands are a bit different. It won't cause any issues in the final result, so it's not a big deal. Now we're going to start weeding the design. I'm using a Cricut weeding tool for this part and I highly recommend you do as well. I've linked all of the materials I recommend for this project below. When I'm weeding, the first thing I do is get the bulk of the excess vinyl peeled off. I've sped up this part of the video, but when you're weeding, especially if you're new to all of this, make sure you take your time with this part so you don't accidentally tear or weed the wrong part of the design. After I get the bulk of the excess vinyl off of the design, I go back and get all of the smaller pieces in the letters and the rest of the design. Make sure you look over your design a few times to make sure there aren't any little pieces you missed when weeding. I can tell you from experience, it is very frustrating to finish a project and realize you missed something when you were weeding and then it's too late to fix it. For this project, since we use different colors for each of the letters, we are going to manually place all of the letters on the canvas. To do that, we need to cut the excess plastic backing off so we can place our letters close together on the canvas. Now I'm going to add the tiny little pink hearts that we cut over the eyes in the this is my part of the design. To do that, you will just place them face down on the plastic sheet, making sure not to cover any of the purple HTV. Next, we're going to line up our design on the canvas. I'm using a measuring tape to get the top part of my design centered and then placing the rest of the letters where I want them. I have the original design pulled up on my tablet off camera so I can see what order to put the colored letters in. You can see that the letters do not really stick on the canvas while I'm lining it up. This is because there is so little of the plastic sheet left. So once I get everything lined up, I'm going to use a bit of heat resistant tape to make sure that my design doesn't shift around while I'm heating it. It's really important that the tape you use is heat resistant, otherwise it will just melt right to your design and onto the canvas. Now I'm going to pull up Cricut's heat guide so I can figure out what temperature I need to set my Cricut Easy Press to. I will link that below as well. For this project, I'm selecting the Easy Press 2, then selecting Cricut Everyday Iron-On for the material because that is close enough to the type of HTV I'm using. 
Then I select what type of material I'm applying the HTV to. In this case, cotton canvas. I'm also going to be using the Cricut Easy Press Matte, so I select that option and click Apply. The heat guide says to set the temperature to 340 degrees and press for 30 seconds. Now, I learned a few things during this process. The first is that if you are using an Easy Press, you should absolutely use a protective sheet over the canvas when you are pressing. I will link that down below so you know what kind of protective sheet to use. When I didn't do this, I ended up with black marks on the edges of my canvas. The second thing I learned is that it's really difficult for the larger heat press to evenly apply pressure to canvas. This is because the frame that is used around the edges is not a flat surface and the center of the canvas doesn't have anything underneath it. So there really isn't a great way to get even heat through the entire design on the canvas with the larger heat press. So what I did was I used my large easy press with the protective sheet to get the majority of the design adhered. Then I went back through with my Easy Press Mini on a few of the spots that weren't quite adhered. If you are using a larger canvas, I recommend folding a small towel to place underneath the center of the canvas so that the center of the design can get more evenly heated. The type of HTV I'm using is a warm peel, meaning you have to peel the plastic sheet away from the design while it is warm. The type of vinyl you purchase will specify if it's warm peel or cool peel heat transfer vinyl. Once you start to peel the plastic sheet away, if you notice any parts of the design not adhering, just place the plastic sheet back down and go over that spot again until it sticks. In the future, if I'm doing a small canvas like this, I will probably just use my Easy Press Mini for the whole design. If I do a larger canvas, I will probably use a combination of the two like I did in this video. And there you have it. I will definitely be making more canvas signs like this using heat transfer vinyl. It was a lot of fun and I love how this little sign turned out. I can't wait to hang it up in my craft room, which is of course my happy place. Don't forget to grab this free design and the written tutorial for the sign on my website listed below. Thanks so much for watching. Bye.